What's up to all my freelancers and creatives out there? This is Nathan with another episode of Freelance Jumpstart TV. And in this video, we're gonna talk about value-based pricing. If you've been following along recently in these videos, we've been doing somewhat of a mini series on pricing, the different types of pricing strategies there are, and also the best and appropriate times on when to use those pricing strategies. As we've been talking about these different pricing strategies, it brings us all the way to this point here to where we're talking about value-based pricing. This is where I'm moving my business to and I'm working and learning more and more day and day on how to get better at value-based pricing. So instead of focusing on an hourly rate, the time it takes you, or even focusing on developing a flat fee, Instead, you're focusing on the value, what it is you're producing provides. On my last video, I brought on a good friend and we talked about pricing. What happened was he had a problem in his business and he sought me out to solve the problem. Now, because he's my friend, I didn't charge him anything. However, I did such a good job, he wanted to pay me. So he offered me about $300. And I asked him more questions about his business, his business goals, how much he made, and the fact that the problem, if it persisted, you know, he would have lost even more money. So through a conversation and a series of questions, we both arrived at the conclusion that the work I provided was at least a thousand dollars. But that's the question. How many freelancers and creatives out there when they work with clients, they just take whatever arbitrary price they make up, or they allow the client to determine what it is they're supposed to pay. But in this case, as I spoke with my friend who was also my client, as we talked about it, we both saw it was way more than what he initially offered. And that's what we wanna get into with value-based pricing. I'll be honest, this subject is not straightforward and it's very deep. But to the best of my ability, I'm gonna break it down in three parts. So the first part we have, understanding the problem. The second part we have, understanding your cost. And then the last part we have is presenting the solutions to where you will present the solution to the problem that you defined. But in this video here, we're going to get into and talk about how to understand the problem and uncover and define what the problem is, because that's the foundation of value-based pricing. If you can clearly define what the problem is, then presenting the solution or different solutions will be very easy. Before we dive deeper, I will say this. Value-based pricing cannot be used in every single situation. You'll come across some clients that you're working with in which value-based pricing may not be appropriate. So you really want to qualify the client before moving forward with this. You wanna know what the deadline is. You also wanna do some research about their business, find out their goals if you can. Are they an established business? You know, does it look like they're growing, right? Does it look like they have some income coming in? Also, you wanna see if they can afford you. You may wanna ask if their budget is over a certain amount. So it really just depends, but uh, you really just wanna to talk to the client more a little bit to find out if this works for them. So as we dive in this first part, it really is understanding the problem. So really, you're trying to do your best to uncover the value that is here in this project. So if when you're speaking with a client, you really have to ask certain questions to get them to talk about the business, talk about their goals, talk about what problem they're having, and you have to dive and dig deeper than just the task they're asking you to do. So if someone is coming to you and saying, I need a logo done, or if they're coming to you and saying, I need a website, or something of that nature, you may wanna ask, okay, you need a website or you need a logo, but why do they need that? Are they thinking that the logo will be a refresh of their business that will lead to more sales? Do they want a website because they have a functional problem or they feel like having a website will bring in more customers? So you have to dive deeper below the surface level. And I'll be honest, most freelancers were just hear, oh, you need a logo? And they'll immediately start trying to ask them logo questions. Or they hear, oh, you need a website? How many pages you need? Uh, what platform do you want to use? That's not what you want to do. You want to hear the request, but you also want to go behind the request and go deeper to find out why are they even asking this. Here are some quick questions that you can ask to uncover the value that may be in a project when a client comes to you. So first off, you definitely want to ask, you know, 
Tell me a little bit about the project. So what is the project that you have in mind and what is it that you need help with? So here you're trying to find out what are the goals of the project? What is it that they actually need? And really just listening to them and trying to draw little nuggets of value based upon what they're saying to you about the project. Another question to ask is when do they need the project to be completed? So pretty much you're asking about what the deadline is. Now, this is important because turning something around in a quickly manner, that is valuable, right? It doesn't always have a price tag attached to it, but it is valuable to get something in a month rather than six months. So there is a certain level of value attached to that, but also you want to ask this question to see if this is something urgent or it's just something that they really want and it's a nice to have. So if it's something urgent in which it's hurting their business, if they don't fix the problem, then yes, you know, the deadline definitely can be taken into consideration. But the more important thing is solving the problem. Solving the problem may take longer than the deadline that they have in their minds. It really just depends. And you're going to have to draw that out in the initial conversation you're having with the client. A great question to ask just to uncover some value as well. And understanding the problem is what happens if this problem is not addressed and or fixed. So they're coming to you for a reason. If they're coming to you, they have a problem and they can't fix it themselves or they don't have the time to fix it themselves. So you really need to ask what happens if, you know, it just never gets fixed. Do they lose money day by day? Does the business continue as normal? The answer to this question is a clue into finding out the level of urgency in which they need it done. Maybe if this problem is never addressed, the business will continue to lose money and then they're gone. So this is a high amount of value and it's important that they get it fixed. But if the problem doesn't get fixed and it just persists, you know, for another year or two years or so, and nothing really changes and it doesn't end the business, then it's not that high of a priority in terms of getting it done immediately. So what happens if the problem is not addressed? That's an important question to ask to find out some value. You know, just continuing, there's something that most freelancers and creatives don't really think about. And that is simply, why did the person really need help with this in the first place? So in other words, something took place that made them realize they needed a designer or random realize they needed a copywriter or a consultant or a lawyer or a web designer, fill in the blank. Something happened to where they said to themselves, I need a designer to look at this. So what was that thing that happened? Was it an epiphany? Do they see their competition and they want, you know, to try to copy their competition to try to stay even with them? Did they get embarrassed? Did a customer comment on the poor site experience they had if it's a website or they commented on the fact that their copywriting was not good? Something had to happen for them to contact you. There has to be some type of trigger. You know, your job is to find out from the client, what is that trigger exactly? That way you can better define what the problem is or it may be a part of the problem. And there's, there's value even in that. There's value in realizing that someone is coming to you with a need that they cannot solve. I think freelancers and creators really underestimate that. Sure, the client can get up and find somebody else, but they came to you and they're talking to you. And you have to uncover the reason of what made them do that. Just to follow up on that question, why did they come to you specifically? There's other designers out there. There's other consultants. There's other copywriters. You know, why did they specifically come to you? Did they see your portfolio? Is that what led them to you? Are they coming off of a referral? Did somebody tell them about your work? If so, that means they already trust you because somebody else already endorsed you and said you were good to work with. So how do they find you? Cause there's even value in that. There's value in knowing that I can trust you versus, you know, just going out there, searching a job board, looking for a freelancer, and they don't really know the person. So there's value in the fact that you may have a connection with the client who's coming with you. So why do they come to you specifically? And one of the more important questions that I like to ask is simply, if everything were to go perfectly according to plan, what does success look like? This is important. Somebody may say, I want a brand new website and yeah, they want a new look and, and all that. However, success may be different. Success may mean 
on my new website, I want 20 more clients a month, or they want it to result in an increase in money. That's different. See, the ask is a website, but to them, they may define success as at the end of the day, they make more money. See, that's different. So the more important thing is what does success look like? You can have a website and it can be unsuccessful or you can build a website and then you get no traffic. I see it happen all of the time. So what does success really look like for the client? Those are some quick questions you can ask to uncover value. And remember, the whole goal is you're trying to define the problem and find out what happens if the problem does not get fixed and also what the business looks like or how the business is improved if the problem is fixed. Cause you're going to use this in the future when you're presenting the solution to the client. So this is very important. So ask as many questions as you can about the problem, try to understand it, try to understand the business, try to understand the business goals and how the solution to the problem can help everyone in that business. So that's the first part, understanding the problem. The second part involves understanding your cost or the cost to start crafting together a solution. So what that really involves is you understanding what the business needs are, the business goals are, but also what the business makes financially. So you're going to have to start asking certain questions and diving into, you know, how much money does the client make a week, a month, or how many clients or customers does the client get in a month, in a week, because you're going to have to tie the return on investment to an increase into productivity or an increase into time saved or an increase to that results in more money for the client. You have to anchor it in something. So the next set of things to do is start asking questions about, you know, the client's income. Now the whole goal of also uncovering the problem, you want to show that you actually care about the client and you care about their business goals. You want to be a partner. So you want to make sure you do it in the right tone. You want to make sure that you show that you care and genuinely care. Don't fake it. Genuinely care about the business and treat it like it's your own problem. And the reason that's important is because the client will be nervous and not want to talk to you about their own financials if they think you're trying to squeeze money out of them. So another important factor in uncovering value is getting the client to trust you before you even talk about their finances. If you think about it, you haven't quoted them a price yet, right? So the client may be wondering, okay, well you've asked all these questions, you dive deep, you asked about my problem, but I want to know what the price is. And if they ask that question, the answer is simply, I have to ask you more questions to really solve your problem, to really uncover value. That's why I say this is not for every person because they may be annoyed and they may move on to the next person and that's fine let them you have to be willing to let them but if they really want their problem solved you're going to have to start asking them more detailed questions about their business income and that's what we're going to get into in the second part how do you start crafting the solution and taking their income in mind because you want to help them make more money thank you for taking the time to check out this video i had a lot more to say but i wanted to condense it down and not make it too long with that being said, there are many more questions you can ask. So if you check out the episode notes for this particular episode, I do have a guide that talks about more questions you can ask and the logic behind each question you ask the person. So you can try it out because you're building the case for value-based pricing with the foundation of clearly defining the problem. If you have not done so already, you're going to want to subscribe. You know, this value-based pricing is going to be three parts. So we're in part one. Next week will be part two and the week after that is part three. So you want to be subscribed so you can be notified of that immediately as soon as it happens and as soon as the next video is posted. Thank you for checking out this video once again and I'll see you in the next one. See ya.